coming up in episode 58. I think the first or the one tip I would give somebody is to understand your own style and then incorporate whatever it is into that. Um, if it's for an interview, you can wear a suit, but if you like novelty bags, bring a novelty bag with you. If you like statement necklaces, wear a statement necklace. If you are going somewhere on a business meeting and your style is you know, flannel shirts for you on. I, I mean, that's a statement. You're building a brand, and if somebody recognizes you for that, that's okay. Welcome to another episode of The Little Radio Show. My name is Sandra Fernandez, and I'm joined by my co-hosts Juan Alaniz and Angelica Casares, and we're bringing you small talk about big topics. This week, we're joined by fashion blogger extraordinaire Valerie Carmona from Val Around Town, and we talk with her a little bit about how to use fashion to make an impression. Her tips include dress appropriate for the audience, take a look at how fashion is always evolving, and understanding your style to make it your own. Just a reminder that you can catch us every week on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time on hmsnetradio.org. Our show archives and the link to our iTunes and Stitcher channels are available at thelittleradioshow.com. The Little Radio Show is brought to you in partnership with juanofwords.com and hispanichouston.com. We've talked before about the importance of making a first impression. And, we, you know, we had Ramon Santillan here who talked to us a little bit about body language and the role of body language in, in, in making a first impression. But one of the things that also is pretty important to make a first impression is what you wear and how you wear it. And so that's, you know, pretty much you can sum that up in being fashion and the fashion industry. And, you know, the it really does have a role in the impression that you make. Because at the end of the day, when you first meet somebody, you even if it's only subconsciously, you're looking at the way that they're dressed and you're making you know, um, assumptions about who they are um, based on the way they're dressed. So today... I, I know Juan, Juan sounded a little bit out there right now. He, I'm sure people are thinking... Whose phone is that? Is that my phone? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sitting on my, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on my phone. You were butt dialing. Yeah, he butt was. Dialing. And I am leaving that in. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, where did that go? Is that <laughs> like you talking to me? You sound like Siri. <laughs> but going off of that. Going right. back going back to that, I'm sure people were thinking, Juan is, um, I'm sorry, Juan, you're talking about fashion. No, we're talking about uh, first impressions. So first impressions, as we all know, are very, very, very important. Uh, today, we actually have Valerie, or Val around town, better known as. Uh, she's going to talk to you a little bit about first impressions and as I'm going to introduce you. You are a fashion blogger, correct? Yes. Awesome. Um, so she's going to talk to you about a little bit about first impressions, whether it's what you're wearing and what you're saying. Um, yeah, take it away. Just a little <laughs> bit. Well, I guess. So I welcome guess for first, being with us today. Yeah, thank you for being here. And I guess the first question is, like, I know that you actually studied fashion. So what does it mean to study fashion? Like, what did, did you, like, make clothing? Or, like, what, is it, what does it mean to, to study fashion? So... Uh, that's kind of a twofold answer. I think um, there are two different ways to study fashion, and I did both of them. Um, but I have my degree in fashion merchandising, which is more of like the business side of things. I did study uh, fashion design for two years, but decided a business degree might um, open more doors in the future. I'm okay. a creative person by nature, I think, and um, I wanted to do design, but I think my family and everybody encouraged me the business side would, would okay. be a better route. So. And is that where the is that where Val around town came in when you decided, hey, you know what? I still want the creativity part of it as well. Do you remember when you met her? Yes. yes. Do you remember yes. when you when we met her? It was two years, two a year, a year ago or two. It was about it was at Blog Elevated, and we were um, in Dallas around the Dallas area or something, and we were sitting down, and she was at uh, at a restaurant, I think. Yes. Yeah, at a it restaurant. It was at Log Elevated last September. So last September, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a year. Oh, wow, it's been that long. Um, so we met, and she was she was sitting there, and I guess we all, I don't, it was so funny because one of the things she said was like, I knew if I go down to the restaurant, there'd be a bunch of other Hispanics there also. <laughs> <laughs> and she was right, and she just so happened to be right. But one of the conversations that we had was that, we we uh, sometimes when you first meet somebody, you try to connect on some of the things that you're you know. And we I asked her what did you do, and she I you know she, one of the things she talked about was she made a skirt out of 
ties. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? She's like, yeah, I made a skirt out of ties. And she said it so nonchalant, like, yeah, it's, it's something I do. What do you mean? And I was like, can I see it? Like, well, how, how did you do this? I was like, where did you get the ties? And she's like, I go thrifting. And if you know me, you know I love thrifting. But that's how we met. And I was like, and I, I it never dawned on me. I was like, why didn't I bring her sooner to talk about things that, you know, because Juan and Sandra, they're very much alike. And they, um, I don't, they're not into DIY and they're not into thrifting, but I am. I think it's very pretty when other people do it. <laughs> when other people do <laughs> it. But that was her first impression on me. And so I have to ask you, what is it about first impressions and what you're wearing? How important or not important is it? I think it's definitely really, really important when you're trying to make a first impression um, to know uh, your audience when you go to an event. Let's say you're going to a fashion event, you dress more fashionable. I'm also a career woman. So when I go to a networking event, if it's for business, you know, I'll dress more business-like. Um, you want to make sure that you dress the part and um, know your audience, know the people that are going to be there, know the people um, that you want to meet and kind of try to dress for the occasion. A lot of people, the argument is, well... I know what I'm doing. I'm, you know, I'm intelligent. I'm qualified. And I know that in your day job, what you do is you work in HR. So I'm going to go on an interview. I'm the most qualified person there. What does it matter what I wear? It's still, I mean, clothes speak louder than words. And it's true. I think that you can be the most qualified, but not only do they look at qualifications? They also look at a cultural fit and they try to fit you into their organization. And mm. if the organization is a very um, strict organization, good old boys type of place, and you walk in in a t shirt and cargo shorts, you're not making a great first impression. And they'll probably see that you don't fit well into that culture. <clears throat> and the opposite is true as well. If it's a very casual place and they walk in with a three piece suit, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah, yeah, so it does It does make a lot of difference. I know, and I tell Juan this all the time, because he wants to wear whatever he wants, and I tell him, nope, that's not happening. Nope, you're not doing that. And it is it is all about that first impression. And, and it's so much so that before you actually speak, your clothes is already speaking for you. You know, and, and it's, um, it's so true. Um, it sounds so uh, shallow in, in a way, and I don't want to say that, because fashion is very important, but it speaks for you. Your clothes speak for you. You're walking, for example, today, later uh, today, and when this airs, it's going to be two weeks ago. We're going to a gala. So if we're going to walk into a gala. It's not going to be something that we're going to, it's not, it's like a business networking gala. So we're not going to go full on gala, you know, attire. It's going to be more so like. So I can pack up my chiffon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but probably. Well, no, no, no. It it all depends, right? It all depends on how you wear the chiffon. Well, well let's ask uh, what, Valerie. Like, what would be appropriate, like for a gala? Like, you know, what? Well, for a gala, oh, yeah. I I definitely think you should dress up. Um, like I said, you can dress for the occasion, and you don't have to dress, you know, by the rules per se. I mean, you can still have a piece of you in that. Um, I think when I dress, I try to bring my personality into everything that I do. So it's okay to still have a piece of you. It's just Make sure if you're going to a gala, you want to wear something nice, a, a formal gown. Um, it depends if it's black tie, maybe a tuxedo or a mm -hmm. black suit, that kind of thing. I think that's definitely appropriate, even if it is work. So I, I want to know more about, you know, because I think you have a unique sense of style. You know, you do things that are fun and interesting. And so I want to know more about the creative side, because I know we touched on it a little bit at the beginning and then we kind of got sidetracked. But, you know, what is, what was it that made you want to have this creative um, place where you were creating your own sense of style and sharing that with the world? Well, I think, you know, growing up, I always said I wanted to do fashion, even as a child. I know some people say, oh, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a doctor, and then that <laughs> kind of changes to something else. I have always said I want to do fashion from as far as I can remember. And mm -hmm. I studied fashion, and I didn't end up going into that industry because I think – in Houston, it just wasn't there. I'm very close to my Hispanic family, and I didn't want to be in New York. I, I lived in New York for a couple of months. I moved to Paris, um, mm -hmm. and I came back. And I think um, there was always that fire inside of me, that little fashion fire that was like, I'm here. <laughs> and so um, when I could kind of start blogging and express that with the world, I felt like, oh, my gosh, th this is my chance to kind of – um, be creative and even if it doesn't go anywhere it's still my my own 
way to get like my fashion out there. So how would you describe like your style or your your sense of fashion? I always tell people I'm I'm pretty classic, um, but I like fun things. So if I could have a fashion baby, it would be like Ralph Lauren and <laughs> Betsy Johnson. A Ralph, uh, oh, a fashion baby. <laughs> fashion baby. Well, you introduce fashion into everything, not only yourself but your daughter. Yes. How fun has that been? Oh my gosh! I think the Lord knew what He was doing when He gave me a girl <laughs> because she's like my mini doll. So I, I one of the things that she wore was um, you wore a tutu and then she wore a tutu and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this this looks this. If I had a daughter, this would be Edgar, right? This would, this, be, would, Edgar. This would be Edgar. <laughs> this would be, I almost Edgar almost has the hair, but I'm probably not going to do that to him ever. But I want to now. Fashion is very important. Fall is coming around. What do you have to say about the fall fashion? There is a lot of things that are good and bad, I think, with the fashion that's coming up for fall. Um, one of the things that I'm pretty interested in is the velvet trend. I've seen that. I've <laughs> seen I, that. I think it can go in so many different directions. Elaborate for those of us in the room who have no idea what that is. <laughs> well, they're saying uh, velvet. that velvet um, is coming back this season, and you will see velvet everywhere from shoes to handbags to clothes mm. and um it's just supposedly going to be everywhere. And I remember there was a time where velvet was just so out. So it's crazy to see, like, the trends being really cyclical now. And um, I, I'm just interested to see what some of these designers have out there um, with the velvet. I was explaining to, I was explaining to Juan earlier how um, how this, how the fashion industry and what happens on in the fashion, you know, fashion week and stuff like that and the designers that are coming up with new things, how important is that to the actual general public? And the point is was that, it actually affects us in the way that the nuances that happens, the things that we buy, for example, at Target, at JCPenney, at Macy's, and how we see those little things pop up here and there, right? So I want to buy like a regular black shirt, and all of a sudden I see it with the velvet trim, right? And then you're thinking to yourself, that stuff doesn't affect me. No, it affects all of us. So there was a time where there were sheer, and there were sheer skirts everywhere all of a sudden. I mean, what do you think about that? Like, do you think it's, am I going the right way? Do you think that's like, it affects us in that way? Yeah, I think down? definitely it trickles down mm -hmm. um, from the runway to the general public. And I think, um, you know, you will see all of these trends. Not sure how soon they will be there, um, mm -hmm. but it will definitely for sure see them trickle down. And one of the things that I've always wondered about is like, I know because we talked about like the first impression, but you also wonder about like, um, you know, who decides what's in and what's out. And it's always like this ambiguous <laughs> thing of like, you is know. It, is it the designers? Is it just, yeah, it's just always designers? this ambiguous thing that it's like, it's you know. It's designers. It's a combination of a lot of different people. Um, they have councils for colors. They have the Pantone, which they decide the colors of the year. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different things that go into um, what's going to be in fashion. It's just not everybody sees that. So it used to be fa Pantone picked the color and it didn't really affect anything. But uh, 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 I don't know, in the last like 10 years, the fashion industry, what's happened is the pa Pantone releases the color of the year and then you start seeing it in everything. everything. <laughs> and which is really weird because it, it doesn't affect the fall fashion so much, but it hits the spring fashion, the spring season just fine. Oh, for sure. Um, I... I What's the Pantone? <laughs> well, <laughs> Pantone is literally the company that makes the inks that printers use. Oh. Yes. And when before the age of the desktop computer and graphic design, and even um, after it was uh, done, designers had what was called Pantone color chips. And it looked like those things that you get at the painter's place with all the different variations of the colors so that when you pick the color, you had to pick the exact number of the Pantone color so that the printer could match that color when they printed it. So Pantone basically is a color, is a, is a, is a um, color ink company on a commercial, a commercial standpoint. Right, and they drive a lot of what the what fashion is in. industry yes. does as far as they the come colors. out with the new colors when it, when you're talking about the new colors think about on your computer every color on the website has has a pantone equivalent all of the colors used in photoshop they've got all these swatches i mean pantone is everywhere when it comes to design now when you're thinking like that's a great point but when you think, when you think <laughs> i remember when i was in school and design was one of the classes i had to take uh because of the major that i had and i had uh, you know these little design books and one of one of the classes the first class where they required that we go and buy a specific uh pantone color color wheel 
Oh, like yeah. with the different type yeah. of swatches, but they've got all sorts of different colors. And so those were the colors that we were going to be using in our projects. And I had to go to Texas Art Supply, which is the only place in the city that sold them to non-designers. So you did, you do know fashion, Sandra. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know design, which is a different thing. I know, right? Kind of right here, Sandra. What? But fashion oh. is a fashion is a very competitive <clears throat> industry, like in general. But as is is how tough is it to be a fashion blogger? You know, in this space, is it competitive also? I think it is definitely competitive, but I think everybody should do it if they want to. Um, that's just like saying, oh, there's so many restaurants, we don't need another one you know mm-hmm. um there are so many people that are up and coming in different businesses as long as you're passionate about it and you have a unique point of view i think anybody can do it so let's what does it mean what does it mean to be a fashion blogger in houston because if you are thinking about fashion the the cities that come to mind automatically new york los angeles and miami houston doesn't really make most people's idea of where to be a fashion blogger and you're a fairly successful one so tell us what that looks like a little i think it makes it even better um you know in these bigger cities there's a lot more competition and a lot of companies go directly to these huge fashion bloggers because they have this humongous following but I think in places like Houston we do need fashion bloggers because we have a unique Texas kind of style there's some of us who are Latinos there's you know different things that we have to offer in the south um, that we can show you know the rest of the country and now Texas the style is different every city has a different style every time we go to Hispanicize I know I'm in Miami the minute I get off the plane <laughs> I mean literally the minute I get off the plane no, I'm, like, yep, I'm in Miami you know, it's <laughs> because it's uh, the weather is very different and so I think the weather just happens to affect them so you see a lot of sandalias you see a lot of sandals yes. and you see a lot of open toe stuff and you see a yeah. lot of a lot of skin let's so be honest if, if you had to describe the general fashion sense in Houston like what the personality is like or the lack of personality, the fact that there's so many different pockets, someone from outside of the city, what would you say? I think we're very diverse here. Um, I think you have your Southern charm style. I think you have your Latino flair. I think you have, um, you know, other different types of style. I just really don't think we have one here that's, okay. that's really prevalent. Cool. And when you're thinking about fashion, and if you're somebody like like me who doesn't know a lot about fashion, like what are what are some good <laughs> what are some good uh, principles like that you should? But just we keep love in? your flannel shirts. <laughs> yeah. they're so well, awesome. That's what I, I'm I know. That's your signature. I, I wish that everybody would agree with that. My flannel shirts are the best. <laughs> Juan has been called out on his shirts, on his his uh, his choices of shirts a lot of times, and by guys. But I'm like they're comfortable and I like them. But and you know what? That's your original <laughs> signature, and but, I would say don't change it at all. But for people who you know who do you know are much more um want to like kind of have that good impression and they want to make that good impression like what are some good principles in terms of how to dress yourself and you know how to find that right style for yourself i think first you need to take a look at what you really like because that's really important um when you're trying to make a first impression you want to be comfortable Mm -hmm. and so you can look at all these different style guides and what to wear but make sure that you're going to be comfortable in that um Classics are always, you know, in style, and I think if you try to stick with those, it's... And the classic is what, like... uh... Well, it can be anything. Like, a classic piece for an interview would be a suit. Mm -hmm. Um, A classic piece for going out, or for you, per se, could be your flannel shirt. (laughs) (laughs) A a classic is more an item that actually doesn't go out of style uh, based upon the season. Right. And for women, you can build a capsule wardrobe of classic pieces, um, you know, a black suit, a white uh, button-down shirt, if you're a career woman, just different things that you can put incorporate into your wardrobe um, that never go out of style and can be used for many different things. You see, Juan, I'm, I'm creating the capsule, and you know, all this complaining you do about me buying pieces, I'm creating a capsule, and you heard it here. And well, I do that. And, you know, one of the things that I'm looking for right now are nude heels, because I know those are just essential Yes, for sure. So, yeah. See, my my uh, closet is very schizophrenic. I've got all of the no, no, I seriously, love that the word because the and you'll you'll understand what I'm talking because a a good forty mm, percent of it is all the stuff from the days when I worked in in a place where uh, going to work meant a suit. And so I've got all of the more formal, the button-down shirts, the, you know, the heavy coat, the heavy jackets, the things that look very, very 
banker formal that kind of stuff with the heels and all the accessories that go with it and then my i'm not at work wear was always like t-shirts and in, in, in pants after that what i'm trying to build now is the stuff in the middle the stuff that's actually relevant to where i am now which is not quite business casual, you know, not like the, not the rundown uh, t-shirts and jeans, but also not, I'm going to go, you know, uh, have a meeting at the mayor's office. So, yeah, but it's really funny because well, I'm like, you can really see in my, in my, uh, in my closet, it's like, this stuff is very, very formal and this stuff is, I, yeah, I can't wear that to go see real people. <laughs> But you're lucky because I think that those worlds are meshing now. Um, the business world is getting a little bit more casual, and you could wear something like a simple white T-shirt, a pair of distressed jeans, and a blazer and heels and look dressed up. Yeah. Yeah, I see that a lot. It, is that, like, acceptable now? Depends on the place, right? It definitely depends on the place. There was a time where if you – I remember the jeans I have on now I actually uh, ripped. My mom – would have thrown them away. She would have been done with. And so my aunt, one of my aunts makes fun of my nieces because she buys, my niece buys, my niece, my cousin buys, uh, she buys uh, those distressed jeans. And she's like, why would you pay so much money to have ripped jeans? I don't understand. <laughs> but how, how has it developed? Like, how would you say fashion has developed from, say, even five years ago? I think fashion is always evolving, and especially the distressed denim and destroyed denim. I think it's a huge trend right now. And yes, you can make it on your own, but some people, I, I think, don't have that creative gene in them, and they just want to go to the store and pick it up for $100. But people like you and me who understand you can go to the thrift store and make something like this for $5, um, it's just mind-blowing to them. Thank you so much for giving me that shout out. But no, because I am so uh, non-fashion. I, I, but what I do understand is style. I do understand that um, each, and I can, you can notice people right away when you say <clears throat> she has a very unique style. What do you mean by being non-fashion? Yeah, I don't <laughs> agree with that at all. Really? really? Because I don't, I don't, I've had my, my aesthetic, so to speak, for years. And it's, it's, it's. It changes very little. So when you mentioned velvet, I was like, oh my, I can wear my velvet jacket that I bought for the men's section at the thrift store two years ago, right? Well, I can attest that there, there's a lot of time invested in fashion from Angelica's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of, because I, I, I do in much, very much invest in myself and what I perceive to look like. Because right now, I am not fashionable. I know that I wasn't going to take any pictures or I know that I wasn't going to be in a public that... For example, right Valerie. now you mean what you're wearing today, right, now? right here, okay. right here in present. Just yeah. like your dress for the occasion. Right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So you're Valerie, wearing distressed denim and cute flower sandals. I yeah, mean, I know, are but we're friends. Like we're friends, and I'm so comfortable. But if you told me yesterday a fashion blogger, or fashion designer, or fashion somebody in fashion was going to come and visit us today, and I never met you, I'd be like. Yep, I'm dressing up. <laughs> but because okay, we're so friends. you're saying that, that you're not dressing up for me? <laughs> no, 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 I do. <laughs> I've, we've had the conversation on the show, Angelica and I, uh, several times about uh, how women tend to judge other women more harshly than we tend to judge men. And, uh, you know, when we know we're going to be out in a uh, in a environment where there are more women there, yeah. we tend to put a little bit more effort into that. And I don't know if that says something about the women or about us, but the um, even in the business world, uh, women are judged more on how they look and what they're wearing than men are as a rule. And while that is changing slowly, it hasn't gone away completely. We just had the conversation about the reporter, the meteorologist that basically was told to cover up in the middle of doing the... Oh, she was yeah. having a jacket. Yeah. Did well, even see? look at uh, um, Hillary Clinton and the way she's been, you know, she's been criticized for what she wears <laughs> or doesn't wear. And, you know, she's kind of now restricted to wearing pantsuits, you know, Cause that's that's what she wears all the time. But again, this is how fashion affects all of us. And it's sad to say, even our political world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about confidence. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. no matter what you're wearing, if you're confident, people are going to be like, I remember that person. Mm -hmm. You know, she looked great. Yes. Even if you, if, even if you weren't on your best day, it was like confidence 
really can make such a difference in I mean if Beyonce oh. walks in here right now wearing like little bitty shorts and like you're gonna remember her because she looks confident that's Beyonce <laughs> yes is your next name Jennifer Lopez cause you know I, I know the list I thought I'd give that Sandra I'm very surprised you said J-Lo. Beyonce not J-Lo I thought J-Lo. I'd give J-Lo a break this time <laughs> I agree that confidence can make all the difference in the world. And uh, my dad worked, my dad, and this may not be, uh, uh, people would say, oh, well, that's a guy. So my dad, he worked in construction. And so he, he was a small business owner. Most of the time, he when he went to go run errands, he had literally concrete on his pants. He had those, you know, steel-toed work boots, walk into any place and, they used to tell him that he walked into a room like he owned it. Mm-hmm. And that was just the way that he did. And it didn't matter. People would first look at him and think, oh, well, you know, he's a he's a construction worker. Because you could tell just based upon how he was dressed. But normally the way that he carried himself and the way that he interacted with people changed their perspective pretty soon. And that is one of the things that he did teach me. And I'm very grateful for him. But they always made the first, like the first reaction was always, this is this man is not important based on how he was dressed. And it went away, but that was always the first impression, the first like reaction, because he wasn't dressed in a suit. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> well, I think if you wear confidence, like I said, it changed yeah. really quickly. So yes. And speaking of confidence, like now the now the industry is also changing where it's a lot more, uh, you know, now the women with curves are having more and more fashion options is what I've seen. Is that, and there's a lot more body confidence uh, messaging out there. What, who, what is that girl's name? The one that did JC Penney? Um, she ran Project Runway, and they did a line with her. Mm. Um, T- it was a designer. Yeah, Ashley. Was, Ashley. Yes. 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 She just yes. launched her line. Yes, at JC Penney. Yeah. Well, you know, it's yeah, it's it's good to have <laughs> options, and it's good that there are also options for people who don't have curves. And it's good that there are options for people that are, you know, more voluptuous, for <laughs> lack of a better word. Uh, well, I don't know if you're me. I remember um, there was a time. Uh, <clears throat> I had to look for certain clothes because my it just so happens I haven't my bottom portion of my of my physique is a little bit bigger than the not like humongous or not like ah where am I going with this <laughs> I so, don't know I'm really I'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing the end of this one <laughs> You know, it's always and, and me. Listeners, we will not be posting photos of, of, of uh, her behind. No, that's not happening. It's not you're just gonna have You're just going to have to envision it. And it's not insured. It's not insured. But I, I, there was a time where I didn't know, you know, I didn't know where I was in a, I didn't know where to buy stuff. And a lot of things that I bought, it looked like, uh, it looked like my older, like, you know, yeah. older women already had like uh, the band that like stretched. And I was like, what in the world? But you know, there's a, speaking of that uh, the actress uh, Dasha Polanco she's had run into some controversy because she can't she for a while she couldn't get any designers to dress her because she was a full figured woman you know she she was thicker and you know so a lot of designers did not want to dress her because they were like we don't have anything for her like when she was going on a red carpet so um we're gonna we're, I, I want to ask you one last question and then we're gonna take it from there so along with along with confidence in the, your your first impression and what you what is one thing that you would say you have to like uh, wear or that you would show that fa- that style or I'm not sure if I come across with my or question. do or acquire yeah. like your one tip if mm. someone for someone coming and saying I want to dress better feel better be better with my to my look wardrobe better. yeah I think the first or the one tip I would give somebody is to understand your own style. And then incorporate whatever it is into that. Um, If it's for an interview, you can wear a suit. But if you like novelty bags, bring a novelty bag with you. If you like statement necklaces, wear a statement necklace. If you are going somewhere on a business meeting and your style is, you know, flannel shirts for you (laughs) one. I I mean, that's a statement. You're building a brand. And if Mm -hmm. somebody recognizes you for that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so with that thanks Valerie now I can't get rid of the flannel check <laughs> <laughs> my last question for Valerie before we say goodbye is where where do people find you yes um, I can be found on valorontown.com 
all of my social media is Val Around Town, except for my Instagram, which is the Val Around Town. All right, and thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to having you on the show again. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Little Radio Show. We invite you to check out our iTunes and our Stitcher channels and leave us a rating or a review. You can find the link to both channels at thelittleradioshow.com.